Ferraris. Let me tell, talk to you about Ferraris. Um, I said it before and I'll say it again and I completely believe it 100%. Uh, Ferraris exclusive die cast steel is awful for collectors but an incredibly devious uh, but ingenious marketing uh, plan on uh, as far as Ferrari is concerned it makes getting their die cast models extremely difficult but it means like getting every single Ferrari you'd be like oh my god I finally tracked down a Ferrari and bought one well you know a Ferrari die cast a tiny little toy slash model not you know an actual Ferrari which is um I don't know, really expensive. I don't know how much. I don't really need to know. Um, more expensive than I can afford. Um, so if you want like die cast models of Ferraris in 164 or roughly 164, there's just not that many um, methods. Right? You can track down these old Hot Wheels models made before um, before 2015. I think Hot Wheels lost their, or Slash Mattel lost their license in like what, 2014, right? That's the last year they produced Ferraris. You can track these down. Um, they're nice enough, but you know, uh, in um, Hot Wheels fashion, you have like unrealistic proportions. Um, you have like larger rear wheels and all that. It's uh, they, they they can be nice, you know. Um, and most people that collect diecast go for Hot Wheels anyway, so they're not going to look super out of place in your collection. Uh, there's a lot of them. Some are more expensive than others. See, uh, Enzo probably one of the more expensive ones. The Lafer probably even more so. Um, obviously there's old Matchbox Ferraris as well. If you want something that's more uh, contemporary, you can get like Barago, which uh, are nicely made models. I'm gonna uh, nicely made toy cars actually. Uh, they're really nicely detailed. They have the full deco, but it's way too big to look nice next to like either a true one sixty four or a three inch, for instance, Hot Wheels level of models, which is um yeah just not gonna look right. Um, obviously uh, the Maychong Group. Also sub-licensed Ferrari to um, uh, uh, Tomi International, Takara Tomi, Tomika, whatever, and they make nice models as well, right? These um, basic models in the U.S. probably. Well, it's hard to say, but like this uh, Ferrari four car set was two four eight eights and uh, two LaFerraris. You can get them for like ooh under thirty, which is an okay price. Um, these are really nice. I mean, uh, not really my thing. I, I don't know, I, I've been talking to people on Reddit and everything, it's like people just think they're like overpriced and whatever. Um, I mean, I get that, but it's just like the, it's like the, um, it's done differently from other, you know, high priced 164 die casts. This is like different from car culture, from Hollywood's car culture, or different from uh, Johnny Lightning, because these are not designed to be, um, these are not designed to be model cars, these are designed to be toy cars. So. Um, they roll extremely well. They have suspension. This one doesn't, but a lot of them have moving parts and all that. They're designed to be toys, high-end toy cars, but toy cars nevertheless. So, uh, uh, if you can compare to like an auto world, it's not gonna, you know, like they're just going for different things. And these still aren't really the focus of my collection. I have a, a few um, basic uh, Tomica models, and they're not gonna be the bulk of my collection. But I feel like they're nice to have, you know, like it's. And one thing it has over Hot Wheels and even premium. Um, car culture models, you know, you get the, uh, well, you get full deco, but you obviously get full deco and car culture as well, but you actually get like lens to details, lens details, so this is nice, like the vast majority of premium Hot Wheels don't have this, um, and you have realistic proportions, which a lot of Hot Wheels, even the premium ones don't, you know, obviously you're not expecting Hot Wheels to be true 164, but even the premium models don't have the realistic proportions, um, obviously people complain about Tomica, especially basic Tomicas and their wheels, but honestly, it's so much easier to just uh, pull the wheels off and switch um, better wheels, even like, um, you know, premium wheels with rubber tires. It's so much easier to do that than like shave off and like remold um, unrealistic proportions. That's just not going to happen. So I don't know, like if people are really, um, really want like model cars as well as um, real um, you know, just model like detail. I feel like even basic Tommy cars will be better way to go than like premium Hot Wheels just because like, you know, they have realistic proportions and they also tell you the scales is just easier to, uh, I don't know. Um, these are not going to be the bulk of my collection anyway. Uh, obviously, uh, you also get Ferraris in their uh, Tommy Cup premium lines, which are uh, much, much nicer opening uh, moving parts for people that care about them as well as just uh, more realistic looking wheels while still plastic 
look really 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 nice and obviously also get time limited vintage which um the ferrari ones are just super expensive like they're not um you know they're they're different from like the more quote-unquote standard Atomic limited vintage releases which are like 23 uh bucks um considering like their original price in japan obviously if you get the united states it's probably going to be more than 23 yuck ship to you um, yeah, those ones go for like easily go for like 60 bucks, which um, I feel like it's, it's a bit annoying so unnecessary I love their F40. I think it looks really good. But it really doesn't need the opening engine details, right? And if you've seen it like the, uh, the engineering details, especially the hinges actually show up on the models It just doesn't look as realistic, which uh, Comic Limited Vintage usually is a great blend between like a toy and an insanely accurate model I mean, I still want that Ferrari F40, but I feel like it's might have benefited from not having um the opening engine cover i don't know just my opinion i still want to get it someday but uh it depends on what kind of price i see because they're going like on ebay they're going for like a 100 bucks i need to check like the chinese market and like the japanese market hopefully they're cheaper um cheaper ways to get them but i don't know and uh, obviously you still have kyosho which is like the only other company that's still making uh, true 164 Ferraris uh, because you know um, they give you um, those models in parts so they're technically um, they're technically model kits uh, and you just, you just screw everything together and you get a quote-unquote model kit but you know the finished product is a true 164 um, Ferrari which is really really nice and again it's just not very easy to get and they're a fraction of the prices of uh, Atomic Limited vintage model there is one other company that made Ferraris in True 164. Uh, I say made. I, I don't know when this thing came out, but it's Shuko. is a brand I've talked about a lot before. I like Shuko. Um, Shuko to me is very comparable to um, Mini GT, and uh, they're they're in the same kind of lineage as. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, if you go like down a step, you get to like uh, premium Hot Wheels. If you go up a st well. I guess not really because those are true 164, right? But they're kind of like um, similar to Tomica Limited Vintage in their philosophy, but like, you know, quite a big step under Tomica Limited Vintage. Um, but to me, it feels very much like Mini GT, you know, metal body, metal base, very nicely detailed, true 164. Uh, price wise, they're very similar. They all roll very nicely. Uh, Shukos don't roll as well as Mini GT on a good day, but Mini GT is not as. Um, uh, for me, it hasn't been as consistent in terms of rolling as Shuko. So they're, they're very comparable, and none of them have like perfect quality control. But I think Shuko is quite a bit better than Mini GT, just my personal experience. No, not everyone had like the awful experience with uh, Mini GT quality control as I have. I have what? How many? Seven, eight Mini GT models now, and like one of them is perfect. There's a couple. There's like three or four I, I consider passable. Uh, one that's absolutely perfect and everything else there. There's like two three models and it's like oh that, that just came out terrible uh, But Shuka for me uh, hasn't been perfect either especially with, in terms of paint, but um, much better experience than um, Mini GT again uh, your mileage may vary and this one is the 458 Italia and uh, as you can see uh, they came out in one of those window boxes signifying it's not a US release it's not their uh, Miho exclusive one this is their um, normal European release you can see a uh, Ferrari 458 Italia edition uh, 164 um, it doesn't say when it was made so it may be interesting information to track down it has no ear anywhere here so warning is like it's a it's a model not a toy kind of thing well it says it's the model it doesn't say it's not a toy right the uh, English is partially covered, but a Zamler model is a collector's model. Nice guy, significant until 40 years old. Uh, yeah, I mean, still, it doesn't say it's not a toy, I guess, but it says like a collector model. But, um, this is funny, I never realized Shuko is owned by a company called Diki Spielzeug, meaning Diki Toys, which it's very uh, immature of me, but I just thought it's funny. So uh, it, I think this packaging is interesting as well, and I'm not the biggest fan of it. I like it's like a window box instead. I, I like boxes more than blisters, and I know like blisters and cards are a bit more American thing. It's not really I, I don't I'm not in love with those, but um, it's different. Uh, it's like sirens was like a just everyday thing in New York City. Uh, you can see uh, it does not have like anything um 
It doesn't have like a plastic covering that keeps it in place. Instead, it uses a complicated system of like, uh, you know, this goes underneath here. Uh, there's a screw that goes up and there's this piece. You see uh, similar pieces in like Inno 64, Tarmac works a lot. You know, it holds on to the model and um, and you put it in here and you put the uh, this piece in and you screw it up. I don't know the point of this. Like with Tomic Works and like Inno 64, you know, it's like a like a nice acrylic display block box with like the plastic bottom piece. Like you know, like um like this. You know, you can add, it, it's a, it's a nice display. This is just like a cardboard window box. What's the point of that? And it just feels like just a waste of a uh, uh, waste of budget to have like those screws and everything. And you know, it also impacts the car. You know. Um, has a very long, I don't know, strut, you can say. Just poking out. Um, I mean, this is like a larger car, so it's fine. You're not going to see it vast majority of times. Maybe like you're doing like this angle. Like this is um, very, very, very low angle. So I don't think anyone's going to encounter this. But it's just weird. Like what's the point? And I don't understand that. But it's interesting, right? Uh, and for the US releases, even though they don't come in those window boxes, they still have the strut underneath, which is a bit annoying. And they're going to be more noticeable on cars. For instance, the Land Rover Defender was like, um, like a taller wheelbase or uh, like smaller, like thinner cars. But here, it's not that noticeable. Um, this thing is not going to be. Ex uh, it's going to be a little more expensive than your typical Shuko. If you look for it on like secondary market on eBay, it's probably cost like sixteen, seventeen shipped. Uh, if you cons if you compare it to like the regular Shuko prices, it's a bit more expensive. If you compare it to like other uh, True 164 or like just premium uh, Ferrari diecast, it's like nothing. Like even the like Hot Wheels Real Rider Ferraris go for like 20, 20 plus easily, and this is much nicer. So you'll see like got the full deco, you have plastic insert pieces. It's True 164. Uh, you know, it's got everything. So like if you can justify paying like 20 bucks for a Hot Wheels, you can um, easily justify paying like $17 for this. Uh, just in comparison, for instance, this is um, a um, which I'm gonna call it Speed Machines, uh, 333 SP. I mean, it's a Ferrari, a um, Delara, whatever. Delara made it for Ferrari, you know. So it's a Ferrari as far as I'm concerned. Got the Ferrari badge, or whatever, right? This was one of the cheapest um, Speed Machines I could find, and this, this was like almost $20. Um, this is just much, the Shuka one is obviously just much nicer, and for someone who definitely has a value on like proportion as well as scale, I think this is like a no brainer. Now this came out in red and yellow. I got the yellow one because the um at least the image I found on eBay it shows like the, the red is a weird shade of red, but like I did a bit more research after that. It turns out it's like just standard uh Ferrari red. So I might track that down in after I don't know in the future just have this pair. Because it's a really, really nice pair. I got this. I didn't expect a ton, you know. Shuko is not like Taco Limited Vintage or Kyosho, but this is really, really nice. You can see um Lens headlight details on the front, really nice. You can see the tiny uh, Ferrari logo. You see the Ferrari on this side. It's got nice realistic rims. The uh, the red version of this car have like silver um, rims, which I think look nicer, just a bit more contrast with the uh, tires. Uh, you can see um yeah, you can see that how nice the windshield wipe windshield wipers are. You can see uh, like nice interior. Got some fingerprint on uh, the windshield. Uh, there's a bit of a thing on here, which is uh, which is like really really minor, and you can see how detailed the uh, engines are. I think it might say Ferrari. Uh, I'm not perfectly sure, but it's like really sharply painted, like the the writings on the red part as well as like all like the red paint and silver paint. Um, really 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 nice. Um, Shuko paint is not always going to be a hundred percent on point, but this in this case it is, and you can see like the Ferrari right here again it doesn't really pick up on the camera. I do apologize. Uh, the Ferrari horse at the back. You can see the um, back lights are lensed as well. You can see the uh, uh, bit of a silver paint on the light as well. You can see um, the uh, exhaust ports and um, even more printed detail. It's just all overall really nice. And on the underside, it's a uh, it's a metal base as old Shuko. You can see a bit of the paint is not perfect down here, but God, who cares? Um, I don't. Oh, it says Shuko. It says 164 made in China. Oh wait, no. Ferrari 458 Italia. But I'm pretty sure all of these are made in China. I'm not 
pretty pretty sure so yeah overall just like a really really nice true one cc4 ferrari and you you don't come across them very often uh, basically like i said you, if you want true 164 ferraris you basically have two choices kyosho or atomic limited vintage obviously kyosho has a lot more offerings um atomic limited vintage is really really nice you know you get suspension well not all of them not all of the ferraris but a lot of them you get suspension you get like moving parts you actually get like playability well sh um i think for the ferrari ones because you make them themselves i think the kyosho ones all roll really well as, as well um and so yeah you can see um they look really nicely together as you can just see how like in uh how many decades how big cars has become this is a 250 tester roll saying this is a four four five eight dahlia and so i'm um, currently only really have three uh at least in hand only three um you, i guess you can call premium ferrari so it look really nice next to each other the Shukun one might be the best. It doesn't really have like the sharpness of a Kyosho. Uh, but it's really, really close. It's really nice, you know. Um, I think, um, yeah, like I said, like a Hot Wheels Ferrari, uh, like a premium Hot Wheels release um, with real riders is going to be uh, more expensive than the Shuko. So I think the Shuko is more than worth it. It's really, really nice. I'm glad you have it. And like I said, I'll probably track down the red ones someday. Um, yeah that's it for this video man i ranted a lot longer than i expected to um man yeah i i really i really want like a premium f40 i do want the uh comic limited vintage f40 after um i have to do have like a bit of a criticism for that but that's fine i do want like a kyosho uh enzo ferrari or um uh la ferrari those are just really really cool Oh, but yeah, for as far as my current Ferrari collection goes, this is definitely going to be my favorite. Just a really, really well done model car at a not too bad a price whatsoever, even on the secondary market. That's it for today. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye.